Moving on, we arrive at WrestleMania 39. Last year's spectacular that played host to many show-stopping moments. And night one was where we got to watch the scintillating rematch between Judgment Day's Rhea Ripley and Charlotte Flair for the SmackDown Women's Championship. The two first met at WrestleMania 36, when Charlotte, the winner of the 2020 Women's Royal Rumble match, used her guaranteed championship match to call out then NXT Women's Champion Ripley. It was a competitive affair, but Charlotte walked out with the victory and the NXT Women's title. Three years later, though, things had changed. Ripley had arrived to the main roster, and at WrestleMania 37, she defeated Asuka to become Raw Women's Champion. Unfortunately, a few months later at Money in the Bank 2021, Ripley would again face Charlotte and would again lose her championship by submission. So when Rhea won the 2023 Women's Royal Rumble match, entering at number one for the record, she wasted little time to make her challenge. The next night on Raw, she'd lay it out to the woman that had stopped her momentum on more than one occasion, the seven-time women's champion and the queen herself, Charlotte Flair. On a night one that featured incredible action and immortal legends, Ripley and Flair would deliver a performance that could not be denied. Charlotte eternally defending her status as top woman in WWE and Ripley with her golden opportunity to vanquish the ghosts of WrestleMania past. One thing was clear. If Ripley was going to get it done, she'd have to avoid Charlotte's vaunted figure eight, which had twice been her undoing. If she could do that, her path to victory was clear. That's usually everyone's plan against Charlotte, but she still seems to find it one way or another. Can you put the perfect attack together and defeat Charlotte Flair? Or will you, like so many before, end up bowing down to the queen? Let's go to night one of WrestleMania 39 and find out. Finally. wanted to prove that a new generation was ready to take over the throne that the Queen had occupied. But that's easier said than done against Charlotte Flair. She had counters for Irish whips, big boots to stop oncoming attacks, and was willing to take to the sky to defeat her challenger. Charlotte was starting off strong. What are they blocking out right there? Dude's gonna be at this year's WrestleMania. Oh. 
It was too early to write off Ripley. She proved that when she caught Charlotte on her shoulders and spiked her into the top turnbuckle. Charlotte crumbled to the mat, and just like that, that her quick move. start was a thing of the past. And now Ripley had her choice of how to punish the champion next. Dude, I didn't even get to finish the ton. what I wanted to do. to put her brutality on display, tired. ready to finish Charlotte surprisingly early. The queen surprised Rhea with enough fight left in her to counter with an emphatic DDT. The cover may have only gotten a two count, but Charlotte Flair had reset the tempo and was now firmly in the driver's seat. The transitions are just seamless. Dude, the sparking deness of her attire is amazing. I love it. started hitting Charlotte with some big, big shots. And even then, when it looked like Charlotte was rocked, she once again used her experience to find a counter. These were the moves of a seasoned veteran, stifling her aggressive challenger at every turn. The champ took a minute to compose herself before popping back to her feet, showing that despite the damage thus far, she was just fine, thank you. Charlotte was in her element, staring at the crowd filled with her loyal subjects. But with Ripley down, she had to act fast. Dude, shut up. Ain't nothing happening. I'm about to get my money, money so worth. What the fuck? Charlotte looked to perform her spectacular <laughs> oh moves. Oh my They definitely got new, new, new random shit that they get. They be yelling out. New crowd noises. Ripley saw it coming and pulled out one of the most devastating moves of the entire match. A super German super. And then he looked away and missed Charlotte it. Inside out. A dude holding the sign in the background. He looked. Charlotte kicked out, and then he looked away. Never right when it happened. At this point, you could see the resignation on the face of Rhea Ripley. If that super German suplex wasn't going to put Charlotte away, what was? But you can't give up in moments like these. This is where Rio was going to show us exactly what she was made of. Okay, hammer.
A rare double knockout brought the action to a halt as these two were proved to be that? more evenly matched than initially anticipated. But it was Charlotte who appeared to be the fresher competitor, getting to her feet first, and then nearly taking Rhea's head off with a huge running boot to the face. Ripley was now struggling to keep up with Charlotte, who saw the chance to connect with something big. Knowing what was coming, the fans grew louder while Charlotte ascended to the top turnbuckle. And they exploded when she connected with the moonsault to the floor. Rhea's talk of a new generation was looking silly, with Charlotte absolutely dominating her. Once Charlotte got back in the ring, she wanted the figure eight, but Ripley had it scouted, able to kick herself free and avoiding a Charlotte spear attempt. With Charlotte distracted by the official, Rhea would unleash a monstrous headbutt and connect with Riptide. But Charlotte shocked the crowd again, managing to kick out at two. Rhea Ripley looked lost for the first time in the contest. Was Charlotte's refusal to just stay down starting to affect Rhea's confidence? But now wasn't the time to panic. That's what Charlotte Flair wanted from Ripley. That's what makes Charlotte Flair so great, so dangerous. Her ability to just survive will have you questioning everything you once believed. Rhea and Charlotte both wore the effects of the battle on their faces and both refused to stop fighting. Rhea needed this redemption. Charlotte needed to prove she was still the top woman in WWE. But it was Rhea who went down first, and Charlotte was ready, again looking for her world-renowned figure eight. Before Charlotte could bridge up, though, Ripley, as she'd done the entire match, avoided being locked in the hole, this time grabbing the ropes to force the break. Ripley's growth was obvious. She'd tapped out to the figure eight before, but tonight was ready to counter it at every single opportunity. And now it was Charlotte Flair who looked lost in there. For the first time, it was the veteran displaying a bit of panic, much like Ripley had earlier in the battle. But Charlotte knew not to let that panic set in and went right back to work. Whatever it was going to take to defeat Ripley, Charlotte would figure it out. And it was in this moment that Ripley refused to go quietly, elbowing herself free. Then slamming Charlotte's face into the ring post. I remember seeing Charlotte just stop moving. And now it started to feel like this epic contest was about to reach its end. It almost seemed like a foregone conclusion, which is what Rhea Ripley had insisted it was the whole time as she cradled Charlotte and absolutely folded her in half with a monumental riptide off the second rope. 
All that was left was to count to three and crown Rhea Ripley, the new SmackDown Women's Champion. The emotion on Ripley's face as she put the demons of three years prior to rest showed just how badly she wanted it. If it's not the greatest women's match at WrestleMania, it's easily in the top three. Charlotte appeared both disappointed, yet almost excited for new challenges. Maybe she was just accepting having come up short against a better superstar and losing fair and square. Judgment Day had indeed arrived for the Queen, and now Mommy was leaving with the SmackDown Women's Gold. The Queen did everything in her power to hold the throne, but a massive riptide off the ropes ends her reign, serving notice to all that Rhea Ripley has ascended to the highest levels of superstardom in WWE. The SmackDown women had delivered a classic, and 24 hours later on night two, it would be time for the women of Raw to have their opportunity. With two of the most dominant women in WWE history looking to collide, it was now time for Raw Women's Champion, the EST of WWE, Bianca Belair, to defend against the Empress of Tomorrow, Asuka. Bianca's rise in WWE had been meteoric. After a successful run in NXT, she joined the main roster at WrestleMania 36, and one year later, we capture the SmackDown Women's Championship in the night one main event of WrestleMania 37. She'd lose to Becky Lynch at SummerSlam 2021, but the two would have their rematch at WrestleMania 38. This time, however, Becky was the Raw Women's Champion after being drafted from SmackDown, which would lead to her relinquishing the SmackDown Women's Championship in exchange for Raw's version. And this time, it was Bianca emerging victorious. Belair's reign would see victories over former women's champions Becky, Bailey, and Alexa Bliss. Truly in her element, no one has been able to find an answer for Bianca Belair, which is what made the world of sports entertainment buzz in anticipation. When Asuka emerged from the 2023 Elimination Chamber as the winner, guaranteeing a meeting with Raw's women's champion at WrestleMania 39. When it comes to accomplishments, Asuka has left no stone unturned. NXT Women's Champion, Women's Tag Team Champion, winner of the 2018 Women's Royal Rumble, winner of the 2020 Women's Money in the Bank, held both the Raw and SmackDown Women's Championships, and of course, her initial undefeated run of 914 days to start her WWE career. Asuka had returned to the 2023 Royal Rumble, sporting a new look, seemingly dialing into something even more sinister than her punishing norms. She didn't win that night, but rebounded nicely the next month at Elimination Chamber, securing the meeting with Belair. Would Bianca's strength and athleticism be enough to survive Asuka's submission and kicks? Could Asuka find a way to stop a prime champion who seems unstoppable? Or would Asuka find herself as just the latest former champion to fall victim to Belair's KOD? These were the questions on the minds of the members of the WWE Universe. If you're going to defeat Asuka, it's going to take everything that the EST has in her arsenal. The power advantage is there, and if the KOD connects, it's lights out. But swing for the stars against Asuka and miss, then it's the mist. You're on your own against the wall, but we all know that even with the pressure building, you will never fall. Tired. It's cool because of the showcase of the uh, the WrestleMania showcase. You get a lot of WrestleMania attire, so it's pretty cool. Dude, this arena, these arenas look amazing. That uh, attire looks amazing. Dude, this whole game looks amazing.
dude, it's so crazy just looking at this game. Especially with the camera cuts, like how amazing it looks. Like, bruh, compared to what I remember these wrestling games used to look like, it's wild, bro. Like, it's so crazy. Why won't you stay in the corner? in the ring. Don't you do it, Oscar. That. Not the signature I'm on. Oh, you could grab it from the outside now? I guess it makes sense if the managers could do it. That's awesome. I like that. I like that. Yeah, I need my signature back. It's really wild seeing like the legit refs. It's been such a long time. logo and everything all over this room. This 
dude. That was ah. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I nearly just took so long just to get this signature. three finishers and 
Asuka's kicking my ass. Pullback, yeah, it's a pullback. Come on, Oscar. Go. Despite only being made official weeks prior to WrestleMania, the entire WWE Universe was excited to see this clash between Asuka and Bianca Belair. Asuka looked to take control, sidestepping an overzealous Bianca charge and connecting with a huge front kick. While not possessing the strength of Belair, Asuka's kicks were absolutely potent and could end the match at a moment's notice. Bianca tried to recover, but Asuka would not relent. Belair was able to catch a kick, hoping to bring this flurry to an end. But Asuka took advantage of the space between them, launching an apron drop kick that sent Belair crashing to the post. No feeling out, no chain wrestling. Asuka wasn't playing games in there. Perhaps caught up in the moment, Asuka then tried something not normally seen in her playbook. Looking to suplex Belair from the ring to the floor. Can you even imagine the damage if Asuka connected with something like that? Say hi to the people. But the EST of WWE was able to block it and return the favor to Asuka by throwing her into the ring post. Kind of Having slowed the pace bit. down, Bianca could now use her strength to keep kind of Asuka in check and perform cat. a suplex from the outside to bring Asuka back into the ring. Bianca Belair's power on you. full display, you. completely muscling you. Asuka over the top rope and you. crashing okay. hard to the mat. If Asuka was going to win that night, she'd have to avoid letting Bianca get a hold of her. Eventually, Belair was able to wear Asuka down with her power, and a huge body slam looked to completely deflate the Empress of Tomorrow. Belair definitely thought Asuka was out, slowly climbing to the top rope in preparation of her next move. But there's a chance Asuka was only pretending to be hurt, popping back to her feet to cut Belair off. Asuka looked to set up a Super Hurricane Rana, but this also put her right back into close quarters with Belair, who immediately used the positioning to her advantage, lifting Asuka onto her shoulders. Hey. 
It didn't last long with Asuka fighting free and then pulling on Belair's ponytail to bring her down. The second Belair was on the mat, Asuka dropped her with a powerful lung blower, regaining control in this incredible struggle. this match stand out was how Asuka and Belair were both so prepared for each other. Belair attempted the KOD. Asuka had grabbed the ropes to counter and pull herself free. A series of counters saw Belair duck Asuka's attempt to hit her with the poison mist. Then the two avoided various strikes from the other. would avoid another attempt at the KOD, rolling Belair into a very tight armbar. Was this it? Had Bianca's luck run out? When you're as strong as Bianca Belair, you don't need luck. out of a situation that would have forced the tap out of nearly everyone else, Belair would power back to her feet and finally hit the KOD, putting Asuka away. Despite fighting valiantly, Asuka had no answer for the overwhelming force of Bianca, and the WWE Raw Women's Championship was going to stay around Belair's waist. Bianca used her greatest attribute, her strength, to get Asuka into the right position to finally put her away with the KOD. But don't get it twisted. Bianca's tenacity and heart also helped her last long enough in a highly competitive match to have the chance to find that opportunity. Another WrestleMania classic delivered by the women of WWE. Asuka was almost perfect at WrestleMania and it still wasn't good enough to earn the victory against Bianca Belair. The EST of WWE was able to evade Asuka's poison mist, and we all watched Belair shine when she defeated the Empress of Tomorrow with her patented KOD. For our final WrestleMania match in the Showcase of the Immortals, we go to the main event of night two of WrestleMania 39, with Roman Reigns looking to extend a near 950-day reign by defending his undisputed WWE Universal Championship against Cody Rhodes. Reigns had captured the WWE Universal Championship at Payback 2020, defeating any and all challengers. He then upped the stakes at WrestleMania 38, when he defeated Brock Lesnar for the WWE Championship in another winner-takes-all matchup, thus creating the undisputed WWE Universal Championship. With the bloodline watching his back at all times, Reigns would always find a way to escape his matches still champion. Cody Rhodes had made his triumphant return at WrestleMania 38, appearing as Seth Rollins' mystery opponent and earning a big win. Unfortunately, an injury would take him out of action, but not before an incredibly gutsy performance in Hell in a Cell that saw him defeat Rollins again. At the 2023 Royal Rumble, Reigns would defeat Kevin Owens in a brutal matchup, while Cody Rhodes would make his return to action and win the Rumble match, 
setting up the WrestleMania main event. Cody had waited for years for this opportunity and swore that he would do everything to finally finish the story and capture the championship that had eluded the Rhodes family. Whoa, whoa, oh. whoa. Oh. Hold on a second here. What's going on? Oh, hey, Cody. Don't hey, Cody me, Graves. Is 2K pulling a prank on me? Really? I mean, I'm honored to be on the cover, and you guys didn't include Stardust, so thanks for that. But this, this is really what we're doing? Uh, Cody, come on. It's literally that. the most recent match to ever take place at WrestleMania. And the good folks at 2K thought it was a fine way to wrap this up, and the match itself was pretty fantastic, too. It was pretty fantastic, wasn't it? Fine. Look, if I learned anything from last year's 2K showcase, it's that you have to face your losses. At WrestleMania 39, I lost to Roman Reigns. But Corey, I'm telling you, and I'm telling every member of the WWE Universe who plays 2K24, and that includes Roman Reigns, that the next time we do meet, nobody is going to save him, and I'll be the one getting his hand raised. Besides, you're still on the cover. And I'm thankful for that, Corey. Cody Rhodes attempts to finish the story against Roman Reigns at WrestleMania 39. There's still another chapter in this story, I promise you. But for now, we relive the most recent chapter. Oh, we just got tangled. Still gonna be down off the road. Go ahead, jump. Notice there's a bug with the with the sound. With with the just any type of rebound move. I don't know if it's in this mode only or what. Damn, I didn't even see 
that shit exposed. I don't see Seth throwing in the bloodline now. Turning on Cody, possibly. out here. momentum in his quest to finish the story, but a misguided trip to the ringside area would soon bring that to an end. With both Paul Heyman and Solo Sokoa at ringside, I don't think anyone Solo! expected Roman Reigns to play it clean, but I do think there was a level of surprise as to how early and how blatant the cheating was going to be. attention to the man yeah he got the hit by casper a frustrating moment for cody and his fans or and it's John not clear Cena. that this was not Cena. going to be an honorable encounter roman wasted little time using his drive-by drop kick to floor cody reigns was primed to get back on the attack after the interference of solo looking to smash cody rhodes in front of the massive crowd
goodness. They really need to highlight the key words like South Ringside. Not having yielded the momentum once he got it. But like Rhodes earlier, Roman would take a trip to ringside that would take his control away. After Cody slammed Roman into the mat, he climbed to the apron. When again, Solo interjected in the match, hitting Cody hard with his own belt. This time, though, the misdeed was too obvious, leaving the WWE official no choice but to finally eject Solo from the match. The Bloodline's best laid plans were going up in flames. So you thought. Roman couldn't count on his enforcer doing the heavy lifting now. Desperate, Roman grabbed Cody's belt, looking to be disqualified, perhaps. The referee grabbed Cody's belt. This left Reigns open for a huge super kick, and while Roman staggered, Cody hit crossroads. In an instant, Roman's trajectory had changed drastically. It was all falling into place for Cody. Y'all wrong is for really this. For the tribal chief. I was hoping it wouldn't do that. in time to see it virtually.
Things really broke down later on in the match, though. Cody would go for a big boot and oh, unintentionally the take the referee out. Roman hit a super. The last bump, match in the whole showcase is the ref bump. And he answered with a hard clothesline, flooring both the men. Sitting there, we're left wondering, now what do you do? Both men are motionless. There is no official. And you know that Roman Reigns will happily employ any tactic to steal the win. If you smell what the rock is cooking. Dude, if that would have happened, dude. But this time we got Hollywood Rock and, 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 and Tribal Chief Bloodline. Let's get it. Cody would slowly get back to his feet first, giving the crowd hope that his victory was near. Everybody looking at the, the, the entrance. Setting up for another crossroads. Cody was unable to see the Usos, who entered the ring and nailed a perfect tandem super kick. They followed up by 1D in the middle of the ring. Yeah. But as they dragged Roman over Cody, a huge cheer erupted from the crowd. Were they big Roman fans all of a sudden? Quite the contrary. It would be Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens, who had defeated the Usos the night before for the undisputed WWE Tag Team Championships, arriving on the scene to even the score. Now it was time for KO and Sami to get a measure of revenge on Roman. A stunner from Owens. A haluba kick by Zayn. Satisfied, the tag champs would turn their attention back to the Usos as the four would brawl back through the crowd away from the ring area. Suddenly, we see Cody slowly crawling toward Roman with a cover. We believe he's got it wrapped again, up. Who is going to kick out of a stunner? And would anyone feel bad if Roman Reigns lost like that? Thank you, Heyman. Oh, oh, but he don't get distracted as long as I do. What kind of shit is that? it was out here I don't know where he got two finishers from Yeah. 
hit me with the Bulldog. Did he just wake me up? Cody's adrenaline was high, and he could see that Roman was fading. Without anyone to help him, Cody would have to do this alone. One crossroads connected, but Cody wasn't done. He was going to make sure this ended the match. A second crossroads hit, but now Paul Heyman jumped onto the apron, hoping to distract the referee long enough to prevent any type of count that would crown Cody the new champion. But then... Solo Sokoa would appear and use his Samoan spike to obliterate Cody. You had to feel for Cody. All the work he'd put in to get back to this spot, and now the bloodline appeared, poised to make it all for nothing. WrestleMania 40 outcome. Here is your winner, Didn't even let him finish the story in my motherfucking game. Fuck your story. Dude, I was trying hard not to lose. They did that shit on purpose to make sure you could you could try and fuck up and lose. Fuck it, have you go back in pinfalls. The only match that did that. Let's get it. No ending like video or something. This is indeed a happy. Wait, what? This is indeed a happy. You earned victories in all of the classic ma WrestleMania matches. That is bullshit. All of the class. Quick line to yourself. Unbelievable, but there are still challenges ahead waiting for you. Will you stand tall on the grand stage as a mom? An absolutely oh, heartbreaking turn of events for Cody Rhodes at the conclusion of last year's WrestleMania. Right when it looked like he had Roman Reigns all but vanquished. But that's for Cody to worry about. You got the win. And you've emerged victorious from all our historical WrestleMania matches. But there's still one last while. item on our agenda here today. And that's for you to decide who truly is the champion of WrestleMania. We've got a very special WrestleMania Rumble. With 29 other superstars hoping to stake their claim to that very title. So take your pick and bring them into the ultimate battle to earn all the bragging rights. With so many legends to choose from, there's really no going wrong. Um, wait, what? 